Thank you for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to show you how to refinish a small bench and reupholster it. As you can see here, Tara is taking the old bench base apart. This is really the first step in stripping down your piece of furniture and getting it ready to refinish it. Now she's going to tear off the old upholstery. You can see this is the dust cover that she's taking off right now. And there's a lot of staples in it. And what you want to do is take your time with this. Don't ever push the staple puller or tack puller towards your hand and keep the old dust cover because you'll probably need it further on as you'll see in our video. Now she's working her way around taking the staples out. This is a very tedious part of it, but very necessary. Try and get as many of the staples out as you can. And again, once you've had that stripped off, then you can keep that old cover because again, you'll need it later in the video. Now it's just a matter of taking off the rest of the assembly, removing any of the bolts that hold the two end pieces together or however your piece is put together. It's pretty straightforward it's going to come apart one way or another. This particular one was, was in three pieces. So we're able to take the two ends off. And the reason we do this is just, it's better for finishing. It's easier to work with a lot of small pieces rather than trying to work your way around one large piece. At this point, we are now ready to recover the bench seat. And first thing I want to do is make sure I have all my supplies here. So number one would be the new upholstery and I have inspected the front and the back for flaws. Yeah, that's, that's very important. You don't want to cut your fabric. You always check it beforehand. You could have staining in it. It is possible, we've seen it, uh, where the, there's flaws in the actual fabric. Mm -hmm. So from there, you want to keep as you saw Tara taken apart in, in one of the other segments, taking apart the old, taking off the old fabric. Mm -hmm. And you wanna keep that just as a reference to your size. This, the, what we're illustrating in this video is, is very basic recovering either a bench top or the same practice will, will apply to dining room chair seats that type of thing. Mm -hmm. This isn't a going into cutting panels to, to specific sizes or advanced upholstery. It's, this is just a very basic overview and how we recover something basically. Um, we've got the foam and the batten on the original was still in good condition. So there was no reason to replace any of that. You may run into that in certain situations, but this one in particular was, was fine the way it was. So we're really just going into recovering it with a new fabric. Some of the tools you're gonna need are possibly tape measure, a good pair of scissors. Uh, this, this is a tack or staple puller. It's a good quality one. There is, there, there is a difference in spend a bit more money, get a good quality one. The yeah. points on these ones are, are very sharp uh, and it's, very, it's a very durable tool, but I've, we've bought cheaper versions of and it. they don't work for pulling them out. This no. is excellent for pulling out dead. Yeah, tacks yeah. or staples. They're, it's a very narrow um, tooth on it and it's a very sharp tooth. Then you want to be careful with this that you don't jab your new upholstery by accident too because it is very sharp so it will rip it or tear it or damage it. But these are very effective because if you get to a point where you want to pull some of the staples out that you've done, maybe made a mistake, you can get it lifted with, with this tool and then a good pair of pliers just to grab onto it and rotate the, the staple out is, 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 these are channel lock plier. You can use this style. I use them because they're spring loaded and you can grab it and, and you get a good handle on it and you can also use the, the rounded part of the head for leverage to pull the staple out. But you can use a number of different styles of pliers. Staples themselves, you want a lot of them. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, this is the kind of the minimum size, which is a three eighths, up to about a three quarter. Mm -hmm. Some dining room chairs, what have you. The the backer, the bottom 
piece that everything is stapled to tends to be a bit thinner a lot of times. This one in particular is about three quarters of an inch thick, so it's not a concern, a length of staple on this one. The longer you can go, typically the better. Just as long as it doesn't go all the way through. That's the important yeah. thing. Otherwise, you're gonna feel it when you sit down on it. That and won't be nice. It'll be abrupt. <laughs> uh, stapler, we only use an air stapler. Yeah. Um, you can do it with a hand manual stapler. It's not, we don't recommend it. No. It's, it, you're gonna have a very, very sore hand after yeah. trying to do something like this with a manual stapler. We're just gonna move to starting recovering. Yeah, let's cut the fabric. Cut the fabric. So I'm gonna start at this end, and I made sure that the upholstery is completely flat and straight, and I've lined this up. And when I go to cut, I'm going to make sure to cut a little bit of extra. Okay, perfect. Now we can toss out the old upholstery. Now this is the back side here. And you just want to try and center it as best you can. If you're dealing with a fabric that has a pattern in it, you want to make sure that you line up your pattern to, to center it or, and that's before you cut it too even. Let's put it that way. You want to get your pattern centered and to the position you want, that's where you want to make your cutout. So if you needed to move your, your, if you had a pattern in the center, for example, and you would want to set this down, find that center point, and then cut your fabric out to, to match that. This one, fortunately, is just a straight, like a microfiber cloth. And so the pattern doesn't make a big difference in this one. So we can just center it and get started with stapling it down. That looks perfect. Yeah, I think we're good. So you're gonna you're gonna put a bit of tension on this, not an exceedingly high amount, but enough tension that you're gonna it's gonna hold it in place. <coughs> and where you want to start with this is the center of your four sides. So again, a little bit of tension. And you can even put a couple in at this point just to help hold it, <clears throat> especially on a long edge like this. Now on this one, we're doing a fold to the outside. <clears throat> it's like the original, so it's gonna be folded over on the end. So what we're gonna do at this point is put a little tension and pull toward ourselves a little bit. And we'll just throw one in here to start with. And space yourself out and then get one close to the edge down on the corner. Because what's gonna end up happening, is this is gonna be folded over this way, and we're gonna pull that in so it's flat. But the ends of this are covered by the, side by of the, the sides of the bench. Yeah. yeah. So having a fold over here isn't, isn't the end of the world. It's still covered up. And you might wanna take out some of the excess in here you just got to work the material around until you find a happy point in it. Where it lays nice and smooth. That's it. And again, a little bit of tension on this corner. Pull this down a little bit. I'm actually going to go back here and just split. What you're trying to do is you're going to keep splitting this difference. 
but as you go along. But we're just going to try and get a position in here where it's nice and snug and we're close to that corner. Okay, so again, what I'm doing here is I'm splitting the difference in the staple. So if you have two spaced out like this, put one in the middle. And then you're going to keep splitting the difference between these staples and working your way around. We tacked it in kind of in random along the back side. You're going to need a lot more staples. I don't know if you can see this in the video or not, but it's quite humpy right now. So what we're going to do now is, is start taking the tension and evening out to give you a smooth line on your edges. So put a little tension on it. The dust cover. So we just used our our old dust cover to get a rough dimension on how big we want to cut our new dust cover. We're just going to quickly add the dust cover on it. Kind of finishes off it finishes off the upholstery and covers up a lot of the staples if you can see them. But we finished all our staples off, and there's a lot of them. But we're just going to start with one side one of the long sides and work our way out on this but we'll put one of these in the middle and you're not going to near use nearly as many staples on the dust cover as you did on the upholstery this is just to kind of help look fin nice. yeah help finish it off and cover yeah. up all the staples that were underneath yeah the particle board. The particle board. That was a little close to the edge. So, and all we're trying to do here is just keep an equal distance. From the edge. From the edge. And just put a little tension on it. And we have folded this under. So it's not a fray. And it gives it a little extra strength. Because this is quite a thin material. Yeah, dust cover's not very long. If you hold it up, it's actually see-through. We put the bench back together. What we want to do is apply two coats of Fabric Guard. This is a protector. It prevents any spills or stains. It repels the water and it's also great for indoor and outdoor upholstery. So it'll repel um, moisture and then it'll also have a UV inhibitor to prevent your fabric from fading. So the best way to apply it is to spray on one heavy coat and because this upholstery moves you want to massage the product into the surface. Let it dry and then apply a second coat and massage into the surface. Yeah like Tara said we have superior paint coat, we have our own fabric guard that we use. We really recommend you use a professional grade fabric guard. It just works better, long, it lasts longer. But aside from that... Make sure it's eco-friendly too. You don't want to put extra toxins into your home. Yeah, and this isn't an aerosol. It's, it is a spray bottle and 
we use aerosol as little as we have to. It's just better for the environment. Mm -hmm. So you could use ours. We'll put a link in for the for it in a video. But there are a number of very very good grade uh, professional grade fabric guards out there. But fabric guarding is a, a really good idea when you do new upholstery. And then also one other step is, you know, as time goes by, don't be afraid to recoat it. I suggest if it's a high traffic area, reapply the fabric guard in three to six months to keep that added protection onto the surface. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. We hope that we've inspired you to reupholster a piece of furniture in your home. Yeah, repurpose, relove, and renew it. That's yeah. That's really what we, would, we want you to take away from this and, and the confidence to do it yourself. So please like and subscribe if you like the video. Make a comment below. Let us know. And stay tuned for more videos.